Hi everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Would you like to see a fun way to use fabrics in your journals? No sew techniques? Okay, well I was uh, goofing around last night. Actually, I was uh, officially cleaning the desk yet again and I came down to this big pile of fabric that I had, fabric scraps. And I had used a bunch in my journals and I had some scraps left over. So I thought, what, what can I do with these? So I grabbed some scar scarred stock. I grabbed some scarred stock. It's um, <laughs> very rare and hard to find. But if you can't find that, you can find card stock. And it works just as well. Um, and you can also use uh, uh, doubled up book pages or tripled up book pages if you don't have card stock. Um, actually, that would look really cool. I have to try that. Um, somebody, somebody pull out a book page. All right. Well, there's one to remind me. Use a book page. Okay. So basically what I did was I had like different scraps of uh, what I would call sheer or thinner fabric. Um, some of it is quilting muslin, some is coffee, not coffee dyed. This is like a tea towel, a cotton flower sack tea towel kind of thing. I've got gauze, I've got some linens. Yes, I chop up linens, uh, but I get them at the Goodwill and I figured, you know, they've had their life and, um, you know, sometimes there's a spot or a stain on it, but you just cut that and then you've got this beautiful fabric to use. So um, all sorts of possibilities there. And uh, I think this came on a big bolt. I, I'm not quite exactly sure what it is. It's uh, maybe it's got snowflakes on it but I, I guess it's kind of like wedding material or veil like material some sheer some sheer stuff and then uh, this came from clothing okay so you can find sources for this type of stuff a lot of places this is from an old uh, napkin or like a, a wrap to swaddle little cooked buns you know like freshly baked buns and I had been nipping on that for a while here's a handkerchief an old handkerchief and I've been whittling on that as you can see this is from clothing Okay. And oh, don't forget curtains. Curtains can be a great source and they give you a lot of material for not much money. So make sure you check those sections or run around your house and see which curtains you're kind of tired of and yank those puppies down. And uh, oh, here's a, um, this was originally, uh, I believe a tablecloth. And uh, yep, I've been whittling on that baby and it just keeps on giving. So we've got that to play with. And here is some very thin cotton i believe this came from a clothing um a clothing yes <laughs> this came from a clothing and uh here we have um some pretty actually avocado dyed this but it was just some pretty lace fabric so these little strips and pieces that you have left over from making your journals hang on to those and uh because they're gold crafter gold um how about this this is more probably lace tablecloth something like that and uh, make sure you look around for the least expensive thrift store in your neck of the woods if you have one or if not you know bark up your friends and family's um, doors to see if they have any extra old linens tablecloths curtains and stuff they're not using because uh, odds are people have this stuff stashed away in their uh, closets and they're not using it and they would be more than happy to give it to you to craft with okay so let me show you my prototypes Ooh. yeah stand up for this all right so this one i just had a i've came across a doily and I thought, oh, let me just glue that doily on there. And I'll give you some ideas on how you can use these things, but they just turned out so pretty and they really do adhere well. And it was a pretty painless process. So I just wanted to go over it with you. But here, uh, I don't even know if you can see that, but there is um, some curtain on there. Here's just some um, coffee splattered uh, bed sheet, I think this was. And uh, this was from a pretty napkin a vintage napkin but the napkin was torn or had spots on it or something that just didn't make it pretty to be a napkin anymore so we're giving new life to it and uh, this is curtain some kind of sheer curtain with just some um, light embroidery on it and this is linen some kind of linen probably from a tablecloth more of a uh, the pretty handkerchief and here I just put some double pieces on. Actually, I worked with um, squares of cardstock and I just glued random pieces onto the cardstock. And then I just cut some up in varying sizes so that I would have them at the ready. Here's a piece of, uh, this came, this was just a, a big uh, folded bolt of material that I got at Goodwill that I just think is so pretty, can be used in so many ways. More of the uh the little handkerchief oh and here's some old scarf i mean this scarf is so delicate you basically just touch it and, and it falls apart but it could be backed onto um cardstock and used in so many different ways and it can be cut and uh, you know you could do all sorts of things with this so um just wanted to give you some ideas and these are just little random pieces of uh different different pieces of that pretty pretty 
Handkerchief. Hi, those are the lovebirds saying hello. Ollie must be snacking. He's fine. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> um, okay. And I also want to show you one more thing if we have time. So let's just uh, go ahead and make some of these. It's a very, very simple process. Anybody can do this, but it gives you a great backstock in like no time for pockets and tucks. And you could make little journal covers with these. Oh, would that be so cute? A little baby journal cover? Oh my gosh. Yes, okay. Oh my God, I can't stand it. I'm getting, I, I'm just like so excited to make these things. And this came out of the blue. I was just cleaning up and all of a sudden there was that pile of fabric. And next thing you know, I had to make something with it, um, which of course recreated a mess on the desk, but who's saying, who's counting? Okay, so something that is very helpful and handy, I'm gonna move this, oh, okay. Oh, I apparently have another one under there. Um, I was just working on this one, multi, multi uh, materials on here just for fun. Not sure how I'm gonna use it yet, but I'm just gonna keep it all together so I can cut as needed. And I think these would be actually very pretty if I uh, fill in the holes a little bit to uh, scan those as well um for collage papers and stuff so let me think on that um let's see okay so what i used and i'm sure you can use different kinds of glue here but for simplicity's sake where's my book okay and i know i had everything right here and here it is under the pi pi pile of papers or uh, fabrics okay so I like to use a uh, something that I can turn the pages on. So this is an old catalog. It's very, my glue catalog, I call it. Get a fresh page, put this down. I'm gonna use Scotch Create Glue Stick because this is a good one. It has good grab. It will grab fabric too, which is kind of nice. Um, you may want a stronger glue stick for this particular uh, craft because um, it, uh, otherwise it may just come right off. Um, you may be able to use Fabrifix, fa um, uh, fabric glue as well. It might be a little messy though and it might bleed through your fabric so that's why I'm using the glue stick but you can also probably try extremely thin coat of Mod Podge or else it will bleed through. So I'm, I'm trying to think of something that will not bleed through and I'm, I'm pretty well this this did not bleed through so that's why I'm using it. There you go. <laughs> okay so basically I'm just covering the surface. Maybe do about half at a time because it will dry on you if you wait too long but uh, get your edges. That's probably one of the most important thing and just you can use the light to see where it's covered. Okay, so use the light. Um, don't go to the light, just use the light right now, yes. <laughs> okay, so now this is kind of a bluey gray, that's kind of pretty. And um, trying not to overthink what I'm doing here, but I'm just placing, am I in shot? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna use this uh, tablecloth lace. Or oh, this could be a curtain too, I don't know what it was. Okay, and then you sort of hand tool it down and that gives you good adherence. And yeah, that's like, that's it. You know, it's pretty easy. So let's grab this again. I mean, probably the most difficult thing here is locating the fabric and getting the good glue stick so it'll stick. Um, and, but I think it's very satisfying craft. Um, I don't know, I just got started. And next thing you know, there was like 150 of these on my desk and I couldn't stop. So um, my husband had to yank me away. He's like, time to go to bed, time to go to bed. I'm like, I don't wanna go to bed, I'm having fun, leave me alone. <laughs> You know that? No, not yet. No, no. I felt like a, like a little uh, eight-year-old whining. <laughs> I don't want to go to bed. I didn't. I was having fun. And um, okay, let me just, this is a piece of lace I had. Maybe I can stick him here. Okay, why not? It's, it's, it's my paper and I can do what I want to. Do what I want to. And so can you do what you want to. Okay. Um, you can use, like, this is a thicker, denser one. It doesn't have to show the cardstock through. So it could be uh, direct mail, junk mail, or something like that on the back. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be something pretty or eye attractive. Um, but if you're going to use the lacy see-throughs, yeah, I'd kind of lean towards the pretty eye attractive something. And uh, just white cardstock will work too. If you put colored things on it, that would look really neat. Actually, it would look really cool if you put white on white too, the kind of like that whole bridal effect, that would be very pretty. All right, so we have that there. Oh, so much excitement, so much excitement. Where do we go with all this? Okay, so now I'm just trying to use up my space. Oh, wait, uh, you want to go there? It's like collage with fabric, really. I mean, that's essentially what it is. Um, fabric scissors would help here. Of course, I'm grabbing the paper scissors. Um, okay, let me just smush that down. It smushes very, very easily. It adheres very easily. Okay, there we go. So remember, you don't have to be too committal on where you put these initially because you can cut them to shape as you want to later. All right, so now that I have most of it covered, can you see? Except for this little corner. I'm just gonna come along here and trim the edges off. 
They're not too bad. Why don't I use the... I have fabric scissors right here, and I'm, I'm not cutting the cardstock. I'm just cutting the fabric, so I can just trim these to shape. Maybe put these here. See how good I was about getting the, the corners down. I have that one little corner there. Oh, I have this little piece here, and he looks like he just wants to snuggle himself in there, huh? You want to snuggle? You want to snuggle? Come on. In you go. In you go. Okay. I was squawking. I was chasing um, one of those little lizards around. Today, I don't know if you live in Florida, you know the little lizards, uh, little gecko lizards. I think I think they're geckos, um, but they, uh, they, every once in a while, one gets in the house and you have to do the lizard hunt. And uh, if you don't get them, they dry out. So it's kind of like a, you got to get them or it's a sad ending. Um, so yeah, I was on a lizard hunt this morning and uh, no, I didn't get him. No, he's out there still somewhere roaming around and hopefully I'll find him when he wants to come out and get some water because... <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I imagine it's going to get thirsty at some point. Um, okay, so there we go. That was it. Pretty, pretty fast, huh? Pretty easy. No big deal. And this is, this is basically a background. It could be a background for a page. Let me uh, take you in a little closer so you can see. It, you can cut these apart to make pockets or tucks. Wouldn't that be cute? Mm -hmm. um, you can make uh, journal cards, maybe cut a long one this way. You know, that would be really cute. Maybe back up so you can see. Okay, you know, like cut here cut here, and make a big journal card. That would be cool. And you've already got backing on it because you used cardstock, which is kind of cool. Um, okay, so I'm going to call that one done, but we're just going to make a few of these together. Then I'll cut some of them up and I'll, I'll uh, make something out of them and we can, we can kind of get some ideas rolling there. Um, okay, so now I got this pile of stuff actually from a Goodwill grab bag. And I was so surprised. Um, sometimes when you see those Goodwill grab bags, you think, ah, oh, it's a little overpriced. I don't know. But they, you can't really get into them because they seal them. And then they have the big warning that says, if you break the bag, you're going to be, you know, punished and thrown into the dungeon for seven weeks. And, um, you know, often somebody has already made it there before you and there's a little ferret hole, <laughs> you know what I mean, in the bag. And, uh, but often you cannot see what is in the, um, the bag. But what I found is that you kind of trust the process and you know that whoever's filling that bag is thinking, all right, well, what would make this bag worth, you know, two bucks, three bucks, five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever it is. Um, and sometimes I've like shied away from the more expensive bags, but sometimes when I get one, I'm shocked at what I find in them. I'm like, oh man, man, this is worth way more than 10 bucks, you know, but you don't know. It's kind of one of those surprise sight unseen things. You just got to Trust your gut and go. And, and if you get a few pleasant surprises, then you, I think you have more confidence. I, I don't work for Goodwill. I'm not <laughs> like promoting their grab bags, but I've had good luck with them. But I haven't been to Goodwill since all this hoo-ha started. So um, I don't know. I'm saving them for the rest of you out there if you have brave and go into Goodwill at this moment. Uh, I'm still chicken heart. I'm at home hiding. And uh, okay. So once your page gets too gluey, just get rid of it. We don't need any of that in our life. Now we have enough enough to deal with. And um, okay, so that whole half is done. I mean, I can use that for a lot of things. So let me uh, go ahead and do this. It's very easy, especially with the wide glue stick. Um, that'll give you uh, more coverage per swipe. And then uh, your job is quite quite simple, but very rewarding. Okay, so let me let me try some of these. Now, you can do it two ways. You can touch or not touch. And I'm going to try not touching because I'm going to think of these as individual elements. And basically, this is stiffening my fabric. If I want to make a tuck or a pocket, this allows me to use fabric without a sewing machine, but it also gives me this fabric some strength and support so it's not all floppy goosey. Because uh, sometimes when you don't have that strength and support behind it, it it's just uh, you lose stuff and stuff falls out easily and... Uh, it's not as secure, but this way you get some nice uh, security. I've just got some of these strips here. I'm going to put them down. They're all going to fit nicely there, and we're going to call that done. All right. And I think it's a good idea to let the glue dry before you do any major things with it. Um, now, you could come through and use your sewing machine on top of this stuff if you like. Um, you know, maybe you want to sew down the edges just to feel good about it, but this, this glue grabs kind of fast, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. I don't feel like I need to run in there and sew the edges, but I have used a lot of glues that don't and, or glue sticks. So, um, okay, so that's two so far. Yeah, kind of cute, huh? All right, so we put those babies over there. Let's make another. Let's not, let's keep creating here because, uh, I want to show you a couple other things too. What time are we at? 14? Okay. All right, so let's make one more of these. All right, let me glue it up again. And uh, 
And as you can see, the process goes quite smoothly. And the most important thing is get those edges, go around the world. Yeah, around the world, also known as around the mountain. Mm -hmm. It just depends what part of the country you're from, if it's around the world or around the mountain. And uh, then just put some stuff down. I mean, oh, this, this, I think, the snowflakes, can't see what's the right side, the snowflakes on the blue, I think, would be very pretty. Okay, how are we doing there? All right. I don't know if you can see that. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me bring you down. Can you see that? The snowflakes? Yeah? Okay, I'm trying to show you. All right. Backing up. Not sure if you can see that, but we're carrying on. All right, glue a little bit more here. Yeah, getting my edges. Yes, yes, feeling good about it. And, oh, this is pretty. This, uh, oh yeah, let me use this one. Okay, so here is a curtain, okay? And I have the band or the top part, and I'm gonna cut that off, and we're gonna use that for something in a second. That's what I wanna show you. So. Everything can be used to some degree, and this is just a great time to review what we can use things for since some of us may be short on supplies right about now and this time. Maybe we don't get out as easily or as often, and we got to get a little creative. But you know, hey, we're crafters, and that's what we do, so hold on to your hats. Here come the crazy ideas. Uh, grab the curtains. <laughs> yeah, grab the curtains. And, uh, okay, nope, see, there's no glue over here. That's why it's not grabbing. Okay. I was like, oh. Nope, but everything's fine. We just need more glue. And we're going around the world. I got little threads underneath. But I like the way it bunches up a little bit. It's almost like natural ruching. Yeah, I said it. Did I say it right this time? Okay, natural ruching. Okay, let me bring it closer. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Can you see it? <laughs> okay. I'll take it back. Okay. Uh, yeah. No machine needed. Very fun. And I've got this middle section, so let me get something on there. Got this little white piece. He's going to fit. All right. And again, there are no rules. There's a large amount of reckless ab abandon going on in this department. And uh, you can maximize it or minimize it as much as you want. That's kind of weird. Well, let me get some of this. This is kind of cool. All right. Let me. This is, uh, I don't know what it was originally, but it is no more. And uh, it is a very sheer cotton fabric. Oh, and it tears very easily. We like that. <laughs> Things that work with us. <laughs> All right, let me just take this little top piece off. And those little top pieces you can use for tag toppers and stuff like that, like this little hem. You can use that for a, a tag topper or, uh, you know, a million things. So hang on to those babies too. Um, okay, there's a point when you can't hang on to everything. I know, I know, but just in case, you know, you're going to have supplies. I don't want you to feel like you don't have anything. You don't have to go buy all this amazing stuff. Um, you can just have fun with what you have. And sometimes less is more and you actually get more creative with less stuff. I find that all the time when I'm, you know, I don't know. I don't know. When I make a journal, I pull everything out but so I, I can pull from it easily. But sometimes I get, honestly, my best ideas when I don't have as much around. And I'm that way in the kitchen too when I cook. Um, I make the best food when I only have a few ingredients. When I start putting in too much stuff, yeah, you know, it's disaster. Disaster pants, a big time. So uh, you kind of consider, you know, fewer things. But, uh, yeah, just go in there and kind of collage it all together and have some fun with it. Okay, where are we? We have one more little piece of nothingness. Oh, that would have been better, maybe. Oh, let's see. That was kind of a weird thing I did here, huh? Let me take you out of there. Let me put you here. Yes, you would maybe like to go there better. I can cover more of the backing. Okay. All right, pulling that off. Can you see? Yes. Okay, so now I'm just going to go around and trim like I did before. All right. Okay. Now, if you're me and you, like you try, you ended up getting one on here that there was no glue under there. Just go put some more, some more glue under there. That's that's the fix all for that one. And, and maybe glue on the back of the material so that when you glue down, it's going to go in the spot it's supposed to go. Apparently, we don't have enough there either. Okay, there we go. You down? No. Okay, get the glue and put you down. All right. Very good. 
All right, so we have this guy, and we're going to call him pretty much done. I'm just going to give him a once over with the hands, making sure everybody is in place. Okay, so. All right, so we have a few of these now. Let me move this out of the way. And let me show you these guys again. So yeah, I really actually like that idea of a little journal cover with this guy. So let me just, uh, oh, he's got a pretty front. That would be pretty, wouldn't it? Or I could make a little notebook out of him. Yeah, let me do that. That would be really cute. Okay, so what do I got here? What do I got? All right, I got some paper. So maybe I'll just make a fast notebook. And so um, another thing I did want to show you I won't get too involved in this notebook right now, but I just wanted to see how, how quickly you can make things out of these. And let me just move it over a little bit. Follow the line. So you know your notebook paper is gonna fit. And basically like something like that. And I can staple that. I can use my sewing machine and I can go across. Uh, I think I can put a couple more pages in there, but isn't that pretty? I mean, that's so pretty. That looks like something grandma made. Okay, I'm, I'm old enough to be grandma, but uh, um, we'll just go with grandma made this. Okay, and um, <laughs> so, but we don't have to tell them how easy it was. Okay, never never give away our secret. All right, so we have this one. I just glued that one there. Let, let's let him dry a little more. Okay, I had this one maybe from the other night. Okay, so this one, um, let's see what we can do. Um, let me just show you some examples here. It's like, okay, so this guy, he, maybe I want to make a, oh, actually, let me get a, I'm going to use, this is a scalloped edge scissor. Let me go a little closer so you can see it. It's a scalloped edge scissor, not a zigzag, not a pinker, but a scallop. And it makes a really pretty Victorian style cut, I think. Um, okay. So I'm just going to use this. And just to give it some pretty edging there all right so we have some pretty edging and now all I, I, blah, blah, blah. now all i need to do is glue it down to a journal let me find a journal if there's got to be a journal around here somewhere here's one <laughs> here's one looking for love looking for love in all the wrong places okay so there we go as you see it could look very cute Oop, no you're way too close back up i'm sorry um you could go here Okay, something like that. It could be a side tuck. You could use it here. It could be an upper tuck. And I think I'm going to make it an upper tuck on this particular one. I don't know, I'm just feeling upper tucky. And uh, wait a minute, I want to do one thing to it. I want to ink it. I want to ink it. Okay, where's my brown? There it is. I could see you. Maybe we'll have to get lucky and have enough on here just to make it look a little more aged and antique and weathered. Okay, I'll try not to shake the table. Don't shake the table. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. The birds are all quiet. There we go. Yeah, so that pops a little bit there. And then you could just decorate it as you see fit, but it gives you a nice background to work with. And you are ready to go. So I have placed that there. And now I have the official upper tuck. Now, if you want it to be more, um, you could make an upper pocket, like slide something in this way, or a pocket at the bottom, you know, depending on how you like it. I just felt like an upper tuck there. I like to rotate around a bit, and give the, so the person going through never knows what to expect. So there's an example, an upper tuck made out of one of those. Okay, so, um, oh, I know what I want to show you. What's the time? Okay, get moving here, Pam. Um, I want to show you these little guys. This was fun, and I made this out of these thingies. One, two, there's the other ones. I had more than two, here's three. Where are they? Hmm. You know, <laughs> hang on, let me find them. Okay, so what I did was I made some fabric page tabs. Um, so I thought these were so cute and so versatile and just adorable. And they also use up, let me zoom in a little so you can see them closer. They also use up these little butt ends of the, um, the, the curtains or the, um, you know, anything that you're using that has, that has a hem that's been sewn together and it kind of gives it purpose. So let me show you how I did these. They're, they're very easy. Uh, so basically the concept is, where's my journal? Very quickly, she's pulling it out again. All right, here it is, here it is. Okay, so let's say this page wanted a fabric tab, page tab. 
Can you see? No, I'm too close again. Sorry. All right. There we go. All right. So you just glue it on like that. So basically it's like that. See? And then it wraps around either side of the page and you can decide how far you want it to stick out. And they're sturdy enough that they're going to be able to stick out very far or you can do about halfway. I like to do them about halfway just for, you know, it's got a good grab on the page but there's also something sticking out so you can, you can kind of see something coming. And uh, it'll show pretty on both sides of the page. And um, so that's a fun way to use your fabric in your journals making tabs. Um, so okay, how did I make those? It was quite easy actually. Um, I used uh, uh, scrapbook paper back here and uh, basically you just like the way we did here you just glue it down to a flat piece of paper and then you come along with your yeah, I'm using pinking shears this time I'm going for the uh, zigzag stitch look. Okay can you see? Yeah okay let me know if you can't and uh, there's going to be the sides. Ugh, I got to I gotta clean these scissors. Um, yeah, and they get hard to use. It's usually because there's a lot of glue or something here or um, the, the bolt is too tight, but I'm pretty sure mine is a glue issue. Okay, so I have one. This is almost the size of the uh, top, uh, little upper tuck we made, but at this time I'm going to fold it in half like this. Yes. And with this magic trick I have, I'm going to cut this in half and I'm done. And I've got my page tabs and they're fabric covered and aren't they pretty? They're so pretty. Look how pretty. Yeah, look how pretty. And uh, so this piece that you have pre-made you can use for so many different things. Um, so I just wanted to show you those little ideas because I thought they were fun. And uh, just to give you some ideas of uh, how ways to use up your fabric scraps. I have way too much fabric um, and I need to, I was trying to think of ways to blow through it. So this was one of my ways. Just glue it all down onto some cardstock, onto some junk mail, like maybe, or packaging. Let's say you get stuff from Tim Holtz or whatever. And this is, this is a great background. I mean, just picture yourself, uh, oh, I, I didn't show you with this, so I'm sorry. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta show you how to do this with this little butt ends. Um, um, but basically what I did was I just, I, I guess I cut it out straight first because I cut the zigzags later. Um, so this is the end of my uh, curtain that has the hem and this is where it folded. So I, since it had the natural fold in it already I just worked with that and uh, let's say I glued it down here. Can you see? Yeah. All right I'm putting this down and I would like to see this on a uh, what time is it? I would like to see this on a uh, book page too. I think it would look really pretty but we're going to do it on a uh, packaging right now. See how that goes. All right. Okay. Is it going to stick? Maybe not. Maybe this, the packaging might be too slippery shiny. I don't know. It seemed to really grab on the cardstock. Let's see. Let's give it a second. Uh, no, I think it's too, I think it's too slippery. So don't use shiny packaging. Skip that idea. Okay. We'll put you aside. Let's use a book page. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds like fun. Oh, I got some book pages here. I got some right here. Okay, here's a really cool old book page. This will look neat. Where did the thing go? Oh, is that it? No? Oh, here it is. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, do this. Let's put some glue down here. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. And the magic of glue. So it must need like a dryish porous, whoop, don't do that, and uh, paper. And then we're going to put this down starting to glue together because I have the fabric or uh, the scotch create glue stick under there. All right I'm going to put it on the text spread it out and I guess it doesn't really have to be a folded piece but it's just a way to use up those folded pieces because it already has a fold but we could just fold an unfolded piece and I'm just going to come around and give it a pinker. Yeah pinker yeah a uh, pinker. Yeah. Okay. I think you've been pinked, but we'll just, we'll repink just to be sure. Then we're going to fold you in half. So if you, if you want to have your wording right side up, then you want to put your piece on long ways, like up and down vertically, so that when you fold it in half, these words will read at you correctly. And you just cut them in half and holy jeez, you've got three of them already. Look, you're ready to go to town. Isn't that awesome? That fast. That fast. Super fast. 
no sewing. And um, um, okay, so uh, those are my ideas for today. I hope you liked them. I hope you had fun. And remember, if you haven't joined my newsletter yet, it's a monthly emailed newsletter, which is free. It comes to you and you get a free digital image to download and print off your on your printer, uh, store in your computer or device. And uh, you'll also get a checklist of uh, journal supplies, basic and advanced, just to give you some inspiration to keep your eyes open for looking for certain things as you're meandering through your world. You'll also get a note from the bookmaker, which is a little note that I tuck in front of all of my journals that tells what a junk journal is and different ways it can be used in case you get squirrely face when you give it to somebody and they have no idea what this is um, or the amazing things that uh, you can do with it. Uh, make sure if uh, you click the notification bell if you want to be notified of uh, videos uh, from me along with the subscribe button and please uh, like and share. My videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays and on at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. And welcome, big welcome to all new members. And uh, so happy you guys came by and uh, checked, checked it out. We have a lot of fun here and um, always making new things and different things and uh, all related to junk journals. So um, I also do a junk journal podcast. It's called The Paper Outpost, The Joy of Junk Journals, which is an audio. It's uh, additional information related to junk, junk, junk journals. It's not my um, audio for my podcast or my uh, videos, but uh, I talk about junk journal topics that um, are not necessarily uh, easily talked about on uh, on video. So um, anyway, there's some new material. And I, come and check it out. It's a lot of fun and it's a great way to listen to something a little bit different if you're walking the dog or cooking that stew, right, Len? And uh, <laughs> doing the housework, something like that. And um, uh, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Etsy, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and I have a Facebook group called the Paper Outpost Facebook group, which is a lot of fun. Awesome people um, talking about junk journals, showing what they make, um, anything junk journal related that uh, uh, we also do weekly and monthly challenges, having a lot of fun, answering questions. You can find um, some really nice people there and uh, it's a great place to, uh, you know, if you made some of these and you want to show us what you made, heck, that's an awesome place to put it. That's actually why I started the group so that, um, you know, I had a lot of people contact me, say, hey, you know, I, I made this and I want to show you. And I thought, wow, I love seeing what you guys make, but I think others would also love to see what you guys make. And if you want a place to show it, then this is your place. So yeah, if you see a video of mine and you want to show um, ki the kinds of things that you made from that video, there's your place, the Paper Outpost Facebook group. And remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. Um, don't forget to check out my digital kits in my Etsy shop. And uh, I am, uh, you know, occasionally putting a junk journal for sale in my Etsy shop, but I'm also going to be doing announced sales as well as I'll put up a surprise video at some time and then there'll be a, a journal for sale. So there's going to be multiple ways you can find a journal for sale from me. And uh, um, so there you go. I think I snuck in uh, two journals for sale already, so um, which I have sold but I just put them on the Etsy and um, you know so somebody 